Hi. <laughs> and welcome to this last class. Well, how are you today? Fine. Today is the day for animations and for all the support that you can use when you are giving a presentation. So I'm just taking time while this little man is pushing <laughs> the title. So the idea is give you today, I know, a lot of information, but a lot of resources to use when you are uh, giving a presentation, OK? So let's get a start. You know this is the scheme. You know perfectly <laughs> the scheme. Today is the last part. And uh, we're going to talk about the support, the space, the close, and time, the control time. And this is the summary for today. Hi. Today, Emma, and not me, because it's not my job. Well, um, I repeat it again. Today, Emma is going to talk about the support that you need to present or to give your presentation. And in this case, she's going to talk about the slides and the softwares that you can use. Then the second thing is about the scenery of the stage. It's the same. And the, the things that you know you have to do in this stage. The third thing is the clothes, you know, the appearance that you have to look at you. And the, the fourth thing, the last thing is about time, control time. It's too much time talking to me. That's it. I need to sleep. Bye bye. Ah, it's a little bit rude, but don't worry. <laughs> These are the things uh, for today. Okay. First, the support that you can use when you are giving your presentation. In this case, support has two functions, very important. First one is uh, cut the attention, get the attention of the audience. And the second one could be, could be. Remember, this is a good word. You have to uh, make things memorable. So it's the same always. Attention and memory. <coughs> Get something memorable, OK? Or make something memorable. Slides. We're going to talk about the slides and the protagonist that is PowerPoint. PowerPoint everywhere. And the death of PowerPoint. So I'm going to show you a, a video about PowerPoint. It is it's really funny, I think. Let me go there. And it's Life After Death by PowerPoint. So you're going to see the video. There's some things I hate about PowerPoint, and I figure it's kind of my duty to point them out. So here we go. Here's common PowerPoint mistakes. Uh, number one, uh, people tend to put every word they are going to say on their PowerPoint slides. <laughs> Although this eliminates the need to memorize your talk, ultimately this makes your slides crowded, wordy, and boring. You will lose your audience's attention before you even reach the bottom of your uh, first slide. Please, please don't do that anymore, please. Uh, number two, most common. Uh, many people do not run spell cheek. Big mistake. Nothing makes you look stupider than spelling errors. If it's got a red line under it, recheck the spelling. Recheck. The spelling. And then finally, I hate this. Uh, avoid excessive bullet pointing. Only bullet key points. Too many bullet points, and your key messages will not stand out. In fact, the term bullet point comes from people firing guns at annoying presenters. Hence the bullet point. Uh, bad color schemes, not good. <laughs> Clashing background and font colors can lead to distraction, confusion, headache, nausea, vomiting, and loss of bladder control. I can't stay on that one too long. Here's something I've noticed. Uh, the number of PowerPoint slides you have in your talk, uh, the less uh, useful your talk actually is. Unfortunately, uh, my presentation is right there. 
I've also noticed this. People love to pack data into their presentations. They shove more and more data thinking it's better, but it's not. The more data you have, the harder it is to read your slide, and the effectiveness plummets. Now, you can, uh, you can improve the effectiveness by adding some shading and some 3D effects, and <laughs> then some second order and third order effects, and then, I know, let's add some labels. That'll help a lot. And that's, that's pretty much every marketing slide I've ever seen right there. Yeah. Then some like VP of marketing standing there going, it's real clear in Q4. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> now I'm, I'm into uh, in animation. People become animators in PowerPoint. You can have things flying all over the place and that can be good. If you're a visual learner, that will improve the effectiveness of your performance. But if you're easily distracted, more animations and people have no idea what you're talking about. They're just, wow, that is cool, wow. And there's regions here, by the way. There's the uh, simple but uh, effective region. There's the active but confusing, the uh, effective but boring, the active but ineffective, the dull but static region, the uh, busy but useless, the ADD only region, the uh, useful but amusing, the stupid but confusing, the dull triangle, the hyper triangle, the sleepy square, the dizzying pentagon, and everything else I just uh, call pointless motion. That slide right there took me an hour and a half to make right there. PowerPoint can just suck the life out of you. It's amazing. <laughs> I've also come up with this. It's a kind of a little science I've invented called font analysis. Basically, the font you choose says something about who you are as a person. There's a huge list of fonts, and you choose one, and that says something about you. So be careful the font you choose. For example, if you choose Courier New, uh, it happens to be my favorite, uh, you're probably organized and structured. If you choose Matisse, it means you're artistic. And if you choose Times New Roman, it means you're lazy, apathetic, and unimaginative, and you always use the default. Oh. Okay, so many things about PowerPoint and the problems with PowerPoint. What's the main problem with PowerPoint, do you think? Any ideas? You will get another red. <laughs> but the, the problem is too much text and wallets, wallets, wallets. Uh, it's the design, the layout, the, the, the template that you have. So it's test-based. And this is not the, the, the way, or the best way to get the attention and also especially to remember something. So this is a problem. Uh, let's watch this video about that. Number two, multiple sensory channels Compete. Compete. During a presentation, there are two sensory channels that are the most active, visual and auditory. Your audience is looking at you and listening to you. They're also possibly looking at slides you're showing. If the slides are visuals that are easy to understand, like photos or diagrams that add extra context and meaning, then having these multiple channels, audio and visual, are a positive experience for the audience. But if the slides are hard to read, if they're complicated, if there's a lot of text on them, then the visual channel is going to be distracting. The visual channel trumps auditory. We are very visual creatures. So if you have complicated information for people to read or look at, then they're not going to be listening to you anymore. So in particular, the sensory combination of slides that are filled with text and a speaker who is talking is just a bad combination. As soon as people are reading, they're not listening to you. You don't have to use slides in a presentation. Try putting your presentation together without any slides first and then decide if any of your points would be enhanced by the use of a visual example or illustration. You know what I call slides with a lot of text on them? your notes. If you feel you need slides with text, it's probably because you feel you need notes, but you don't have to show the audience your notes. Did you get it? Okay, let me press B, because now uh, I need you listen to me. And this is black slide. Just pressing B. Easy. So now the attention is here with me. And let me explain to you something. Uh, when your brain is processing messages, any uh, stimuli, okay, uh, there are two ways to do it. One of these is automatic, and the other is control, okay? 
it's easy to, to know. When you are driving, uh, this uh, task is automatic or control? Control, when you are driving. When you are driving with any incident, any problem, you are just driving with your wheel, it's automatic. I don't have to think if uh, I have to do this with the wheel or uh, to, it's automatic, except when? I need to go through this wall and I don't know exactly the space and I have to do... In this moment, this tax is control. And that's why in this moment, if I was talking to someone, I have to stop. I can do it at the same time. I can try to know if I can pass through this, uh, I don't know, space, and at the same time uh, maintain a conversation with someone. It's impossible. So, Control and automatic is important here. So imagine that this is your brain. <laughs> it's a little brain. With limited capacity, and these are your, your resources, okay? This is all you have to process messages. I'm sorry, you have a limited capacity. Remember that. So uh, I, in, my, in my work, I have images and the visual information, and I have verbal information language and visual, right? What do you think that is automatic? So, visual. These are the resources for visual. And these are the resources for language. And they are different. And the processing is completely different. This is the dual code theory. The name is the same, but it's dual. Because my brain is processing in a different way this and in a different part of my brain. So, if I have to read and I have to talk, what kind of resources I have to use? Yeah, but uh, it's mainly to understand it's verbal language. So, but if I have to read, just reading or just listening to is challenging for me. So if I am uh, listen to someone, I'm consuming all the resources. If also I have to read something, I don't have any resource. I can't do it. But what happens if I'm listening to someone and I'm processing uh, an image? I can, can I do it? Yeah, I have resources. It's very, very um, poor consuming. It's like that. I can process a video, I can, another image if you want. Yes, so it's easy. But here is complete. So you can do it. This is the, the idea, okay? So this is very important. Let it be again and return to your presentation. So this is not a slide. You have to, to bear in mind that. This is not a slide. Can you read it in silence? So if I try to read that at the same time as you, we have a problem because who is reading faster? Exactly. So I'm producing a cognitive dissonance because I'm reading, but you are faster. So what happened there? So you are not listening to me. So we have a problem. And we know that hearing information is easy than uh, reading information, Re see the same information um, in a text or whatever. So the idea is, well, I have, uh, it, it's, it's okay he to hear information, to listen to someone, perfect. So when you are giving the presentation, you are the protagonist, you are the speaker, the main information is here, but you don't uh, need to put this information in a slide, in the, uh, like, like a text. So this is not a slide, the negative effect of drinking. Probably this is the, the information that you are uh, t uh, telling, that you are saying, okay, in your presentation. But this is easier. This is automatic. 
or not. You don't have to. You don't need any effort to process this slide. But you have a lot of effort to process the, uh, the other, the previous slide, you know? Of course, if you are in a serious conference, <laughs> don't use this slide, but you can use other, I don't know, for example, let me go there, this. This is a normal liver, a uh, liver with cirrhosis. Or you can use other options, the negative effects uh, of drinking, and drinking has caused then all these things. Especially do something they regret. <laughs> so don't do it. <laughs> okay, many options. This is the rule of thumb. Just oral information is 10% of um, um, comprehension. Visual is 35. Oral and visual is the best combination because I'm using different resources. And it's okay, it's a complement. So it's 65%. So that's the idea. You have to use different resources and images and support. That's why I'm telling you, this is, um, the slides are for supporting your presentation, not saying what the content of your presentation. This is, what is this? A what? A rooster. And it's automatic, right? Any effort to process that? Any effort to process that? So, yellow balls in just one. But this is a problem. What is that? What is that word? <laughs> we have a lot of roosters here. This is German, so it's uh, a rooster in German. Uh, it's, I mean, <laughs> language is ar arbitrary. You need to know about this word, so that's why it's very uh, complicated to process, even when it is your language. So um, the idea is sounds and visual images are really easy and automatic to process, and the other things are complicated, so you have to combine. Did you get the idea? This is really important. Okay, let's go. So this is a, a study, uh, this is a very recent study, about what is the best way to design a slide. And this is called the assertion evidence slide structure. It's just one simple sentence, that is the assertion, and then the evidence. And this is the, for example, the template. Here you can see it, the assertion, it's up, and then you just put the photograph, drawing, diagram, fill, or graph there. This is the template to do it. Uh, for example, like that. The assertion is xenon headlights illuminate signs better than Halloween headlights do. And the evidence. Can you see the evidence? Easy. This is a, a design uh, that these uh, authors uh, have pr proven the best one to, for comprehension in this case, for memory, okay? Other option, here for example, you can see it. This is a cut of the brain, and you can just, let me go there, and there, and there, and you can show different parts of the brain. Okay. You can use PowerPoint. I use PowerPoint. But you can, use this, you can use it as a projector. I use Keynote and, and PowerPoint as a projector. Do you, do you know what I mean? It's just to show the, the slides for me. I don't design the slides in PowerPoint because templates of PowerPoints are not visual. So if I uh, use PowerPoint, my slide is, is just a blank slide. If I use Keynote, it's a blank slide. And that's it. For me, this is just PowerPoint. And I'm just using to show, the day of the presentation, to show the slides. But I don't design the slides with PowerPoint or with Keynote. You have other options. You know Prezi. You know, it's another option. 
For me and for scientific presentation, sometimes pretty is too much. I don't like and uh, I don't like too much. I have it. I pay it for that, and I have a local, <laughs> the local software, and I use sometimes. But it depends on where you are going. Uh, who is the public? Because it's too much dynamic sometimes. It, and the, the philosophy of the, the slides are complicated to think at the beginning. And also, it's complicated for sound, for example. If you use a lot of videos, a lot of sound, it's my case, I'm the radio professor. So uh, it's complicated, pretty. But you have other options. So you, have, you, you can use PowerPoint just as, as a projector. You can use Keynote if you are using Mac. Keynote is a little bit better. You can use Google Drive, or you can use also OpenOffice. It's optional. But the idea here is that there are softwares to project your presentation, but not to design your presentation. So let me show you some kind of, it, it seems today, it seems like it is a company presentation, a guy like that. Um, uh, these companies are not paying to me to present. But well, for me, this is the best software to design the slides. It's Canva. In Canva, for me, uh, it's easy because I don't have to think about the design of the slide. I just choose a template, uh, and the templates are really good. So it's kind of like that. Creating a design in Canva. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a new design in Canva. I'll also run you through some of our latest features and walk you through creating your first design. Your home page is where you can access all of our preset design types. This makes it easy to find the right dimensions for everything you're creating. If you don't see what you're looking for, click the plus sign to see more options. We've just added a collection of new design types to help you get started, including infographics, wedding invitations, online ad formats, and flyers. Let's start by creating a poster. Canva has pre-designed layouts which are great when you don't know where to start. I'm going to select one I like and drag it onto my page. Because Canva layouts are customizable, I'm able to change the text, colors, and images to my liking. I want to change the photos used in this layout, so I'm going to search the Photos folder for a new one. All of the images in this folder are free to use. We also offer premium images, icons, and illustrations for $1. By doing a simple keyword search, you can find exactly what you're looking for. I found the perfect one, so I'll drop it into my design. I also want to upload my own photo, so I'm going to click on the Uploads tab on my toolbar. Everything I upload is stored in Canva, so I can access it anytime I'm designing. It's I can easy. enhance the mood of my design by applying a beautiful photo filter. I have options that can make my image vibrant and colorful, or more muted and natural. Using a filter can... Infographics can be a fun and interesting way to communicate your message. By using shapes and icons that are resizable and color changeable, I can create visual elements that help me tell a story and turn otherwise boring data into something exciting and worth looking at. Now that I've finished my poster, I'm ready to share it. I have the option to post it on Twitter and share it with my friends on Facebook. I can also email the link for my design to provide edit access for quick and easy collaboration. When you've completed your design, you'll want to publish it. Click on Download to export a print-ready PDF or a PNG for web. So the idea here, or what I do, is That's all we have prepare for now. the if presentation uh, in Canva, download the presentation uh, in PDF, and then I open the PDF in PowerPoint. Easy. But the presentation uh, is that. It's really nice. It's different. It's completely different. Uh, it's very intuitive. This is more static. Let me go to animations. The idea that I, I'm going to convey today is that I prepare all the resources outside 
and then I put everything in the projector. The projector is PowerPoint, it's Keynote, it's Prezi, it's the same. It's just the projector. So for me, it's, uh, for example, here, I just uh, prepare the, 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 the general design of the presentation. Okay, this is the first step. Of course, yeah, you can do a presentation. This, this example is just uh, yeah, a poster, but you can do whatever, an ad, yeah. You can do that the whole presentation there. And these are other options. Haiku, Emails, Novio. Novio especially for videos and multimedia, uh, but you have a lot of options. Let me show you um, some of them. This is the old standard for presentations. Sure, it's got lots of information in it, but when it comes to personality, it tends to fall flat. There's got to be a way to put a new face on it, maybe your face. This is Novio from Knowledge Vision. Novio is a new free video presentation app that helps you share your information in a thousand different ways. Explain your concept, champion your cause, pitch your ideas, all you need to do, load up your slides, smile, start recording. Now, share it with the world. The process is simple. The possibilities are endless. How many? Okay, let me show you. Uh, so you can prepare your presentation and use, for example, uh, Novio to uh, record. This is Novio, for example. Can you see it? Uh, this is my presentation. For the second day, I put it here, and then I can I can record me, record the presentation doing uh, with the camera of the computer and the microphone that you, you have at, at home, and I can record everything and check after that, well, if it's okay or not, or I need something to improve. Uh, this is Canva, for example, is really easy. You have here. Let me show you, for example, if I use this presentation. So you can move whatever. You can change the text. You can change the, what, what you need. You have the text here, elements here, icons, photos, charts, uh, illustrations, whatever. This is Haiku. I don't like very much this software. It's the same as Canvas, but well, it's more serious, more serious for me, but it's the same way to do it. This is Novio, uh, okay, and this is, okay, Emails. Emails is the same, you have a lot of presentations. Uh, let me go to education. Uh, for example, this presentation, let me, I don't know, this is a, an example. So you can personalize everything and, and it's really easy to do it. I think that it's easier than Petsy, for example. And you have a lot of options uh, here. I don't, I don't know if I have connection. Well, but you can, for example, if you are a journalist, you can use this presentation that is a newspaper. For example, look at this. You can change the pictures, the text. Well, image is good. Um, perfect. And this is, well, this is mobile, this is for. The idea is that you have a lot of options, more than PowerPoint, <laughs> especially when. Are all of them free to use? Uh, it depends. Uh, all, all of the software are free, but the idea is that you have a lot of presentations and templates, and some of the, the templates are free, and others are, uh, you have to pay. But sometimes you have to pay $2 or kind of I, I, I like very much this presentation. I, I, this presentation is, is important for me. Uh, I pay. Um, but it, it's just a, you have to pay the presentation, not the software. So it's an option okay, that you can use. The idea is that your slide has to be processed in just three seconds. 
one, two, three. That's it. If there is a lot of text, this is impossible to do. So three seconds to process messages. Use this B, B the letter B to go to a, a blank a black slide. Uh, it works with uh, all the softwares, with, um, uh, with uh, PowerPoint, with Keynote. Just press B and goes black. You can use also a, a black uh, board to draw something or to put the main word, the idea. This is other option. I don't have here, but you can use it. It's, it's a good option. You can use this kind of a slide with quotations. Quotations are important in our, uh, well, in science in general. So, well, it's a good way to, but don't read it aloud. Don't read it. People uh, will read it. But don't read it, you know, that you know that now, so don't read it. You can use symbols. I don't know, you have a lot of symbols to use to express metaphors uh, or ideas or, I don't know. But people don't think in sim symbols. Let's go to animations now. Animations are complicated sometimes. Well, uh, we have a lot of sewers. This is, for me, one of the best because it's free uh, and it's easy, very, very, very easy to use. It's Powtoon. I always use this one. This is Crazy Animator. But Crazy Animator uh, is not free. Uh, it's, it's a great, for me, it's the best one. Uh, it's the great software because you can do everything with that. All the animations that you saw during all this presentation are uh, done with this software, Crazy Animator. You can record something, you can change uh, the sound, uh, and you can put the sound uh, in one character. Uh, also, you can put the, just the test and a uh, broadcaster or someone read that. You can change the sound, you can uh, move the characters, you can do everything, but it, it's not for free. You have video scribe as well and you have uh, Movely. Let me show you, well, Movely, I think that this is Movely. So you know what it's like when you want to impress your clients with an amazing presentation? Too. You take your graphs, add some clip art, and spice the whole thing up with some fancy transitions. But somehow, it doesn't always have the desired effect. So one day, you come across one of those super cool promotional cartoons, and you think to yourself, wow, something like that would definitely catch my client's attention. But then you find out that it costs like a gazillion bucks to make. So you start scouring the web for a tool that can create extraordinary presentations for free. It's just that nothing out there is just quite the thing you're looking for. This tool just moves pictures around, and this one swivels so much you get seasick. And to operate this one, you have to be a rocket scientist. Wouldn't it be cool if there was a tool that allows you to create professional-looking animated presentations and cartoon-style videos just by dragging and dropping stuff onto a page? Well, now there is. Powtoon is a new tool that is so simple and intuitive, it allows anyone who ever used PowerPoint or Keynote to easily evolve their presentation to awesomeness. Powtoon contains themes of animated characters, props, and cool transitions, which you can just drag and drop onto your slide and create eye-catching and fun presentations it's that can really be presented easy. in person or turned into animated videos with the click of a button to be shared on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. Now your presentations will definitely keep your audience hooked. Powtoon brings awesomeness to your presentation. Created using Powtoon. And the jingle at the end. Uh, as I, I told you, in Canva, I obtained a PDF because it's the presentation, you know? And here I have a video. And I put the video again to the PowerPoint or whatever. So um, I answer your question. So this is an animation. I export the animation video and this, I put the video uh, on the slide and in the PowerPoint or Keynote or whatever. Yeah. Um, I prefer to do it directly to the projector, to the in the final presentation. But it's an option. It's an option. It's it's a it's a different yeah it's a different way to do it. When I'm doing a presentation, I have, I open, 
five, I think, software at the same time. I have Canva for the presentation. I have Crazy Animator for animations. I have Premiere for editing video. I have Audition to editing audio. Uh, and I have, sometimes, uh, a software that I have to download videos. That is really important. Because I don't trust in technology. I don't trust uh, in internet connections. And that's why I never, never go to the video, to the, to the YouTube, go, the pres uh, go out the presentation, go to the video, put the video, because I'm wasting my time. And also, probably, you won't have internet connection. This, these things happen every day. So don't trust in internet connection. So to do that, I have to go to YouTube, put the video, and download. And I have a software that is really easy. Um, I, I have, you have a lot of software, but the idea is that you have to, to use at least one. This is smoothly. Uh, if I go to YouTube, let me see if I have internet connection. Uh, automatically, Spanish words. Can you see this? Download. The software that I have do that. So I just have to click here and select the option. And that's it. And my software is downloading this video. And then I have my folder with videos and just I put again this video in my presentation, PowerPoint, in Prezi, or Keynote. So do you understand the process? What is the name of the software? The name. Uh, it's YouTube. Uh, let me see. I don't remember now. Is you, this is Crazy Talk. Uh, this is Crazy Talk Animator. This is for animations. And this is YouTube, YouTube something. Uh, this one. E I Sky Soft YouTube, YouTube Studio. This one. So any, any web, it's not just for YouTube, any web that you have uh, in your computer, automatically you have this uh, download option. And it's easy because I'm, I'm just watching the video and say, ah, th this is useful. Click download and automatically the software is downloading the video. And if you want, uh, it can change the format. But um, download the videos in a PowerPoint format. So and they just, they, it's just catch the video and put in the presentation. And in this way, I don't have to trust in internet connection. So that's the idea. Uh, let me show you a opportunist kind like that. You can do, I don't know. You have here a, a timeline, and you can do animations. It's, it's really easy to, to do it. Some of them have the option, but you have to pay. But this is my, uh, I, I'm logging here, and this is my, all my presentations here, so I, I don't have problems with that till now. <laughs> But this is, this is just a video. To create the video, you put the video, to download the video, and if you want, you can uh, delete the, this presentation here, but because you can download the video, so it's the same. Yeah, I know, latex. Yeah. This is other options, but this is just for mathematics and statistics and... But the idea today is you have a lot of options. Then you decide what is the best one, depending on the public, depending on the kind of presentation. But the idea is I, I tell you everything. And then it's, your, it's up to you, OK? But this is the other option, OK? So and this is Movely, that is completely different. Movely is to do this kind of presentation that it seems that you are writing. You know, let me go to, this is Movely. So this kind of presentation in which someone is, Movely is to do that. I did this microphone, for example, the other day for you. <laughs> it's easy. 
And this is the timeline, and you can, well, uh, put more things here. And this is a video also. Yeah, you can you can dry draw something. Yeah, so do you have different kinds of animations? For example, uh, they um, imagine that I don't know. I'm talking about microphones, so when I'm talking, it's drawing something, or I don't know. It is another option, another style. I show you two videos with this movie. The idea is that I, I selected the videos, different kind of videos, to show you the different possibilities as well. So this is Moobly. And everything is easy to, to use. Yeah, it's the same. There are a lot of that. Uh, and there are softwares that do that inside. Crazy Animator is what I am trying to, to tell you. It's the same, yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Here in this software, is just, just put the text, and you have a lot of options, a lot of voices to, for reading it. Uh, and you can. I don't know, you can use a uh, female or male voices, but also a robot voice is oh, something like that, for example, doing no sé, you know, uh, crazy things or whatever. So you can do it also. But the, the cartoon we saw the first day, was it the real voice like you're doing now? Or? It's all me. Or it was the software? No, it's me. It was really your voice? It's me. Okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, yes, the idea is try to... Sometimes you can do it. It's really funny to do it. You can just put the... My recommendation is that you... Um, you must have a microphone at home. Not just for recording things. Yes, for, also for Skype. For example, I, I'm... I can't stand people talking... Um, Skyping and say, I can, I can hear you, I, I can... It's, it's kind of your job, so buy a microphone. It's 100 uh, euros, it's not too much. And you can use it for recording things. And imagine that you have, I, I went to a presentation in the States. It was a, an old man, very serious, and I say, oh my gosh. And, and it was a wonderful presentation because he was, um, he, he had a lot of animations and a voice just telling the main idea. So when uh, he finished something, it was a voice saying, whoa, 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 vroom. Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> and it was really good. And it's just a, a microphone and maybe you can, it's easy to say, for example, and the main idea is, and then you can go to this kind of uh, software and modify something, change your pitch. Uh, you can do a lot of things. The idea is to try to do it in the best way, in the way, for example, if I am trying to modify my voice with a software, this kind of software, well, a lot. Uh, for, for example, mousy, mousy the first day, uh, and I'm doing that, it's impossible, because with this voice it's impossible that uh, the software <laughs> the servant cannot change in this voice to, to, to do something like that. So I can do something like that, for example, and then I can process that kind of voice. Or I can be cute and do something like that, and then with two, I don't know, changes of pitch and speed, and it's easy. And it's funny. If you have a presentation for a student, young students, or a guy like that, they adore it. I can, um, sorry, it, it's, I don't know why, even men <laughs> love this kind of things. Young people, yeah, I know, it's, ah, oh, it's really cute, say, okay. It is easy to, it's easy to do it, it's easy to do it, so try, play a little bit with this kind of things. Well, use different font styles, <laughs> you know, and, um, you have a video here to watch uh, the... Um, right, let me show you the video. 
Hi, Lori Cantus here with UnsuckYourPresentation.com, ridding the world of crappy presentations one PowerPoint at a time. And today we are going to talk about fonts. And fonts are really important in your presentation. And if you want to see an example of that, think back to if you've ever sat through a presentation done entirely in Comic Sans. And you will know that fonts are incredibly important to your presentation. They can make your presentation look professional or not. So here there are two types of fonts that I'm going to show you today, um, give you some examples of what I like. And we have headline fonts and body fonts. So this is a headline font and this is a body font. Headlines obviously usually go towards the top of your slide or somewhere in the middle and then your body of your font is what's going to be used to show your contact your content and there are two types of fonts that you would be seeing in the font world there's serif fonts and typically sans serif fonts so serif fonts have well they have serifs at the end and the serif is those little lines sort of little decorations towards the end of the font there and the sans serif fonts you can see don't have those little extras they're just really clean and here are some of my favorites for headline fonts you can see um, Arial Black is a really great, safe one to use. It's nice and makes a, it's really it's bold, clear. makes a good statement, great headline font. Futura is a great one to use for headlines. We have Tahoma. This one I can never pronounce. I think it's French. Trebuchet. I'm sure that's not right. Anyways, it makes a really great font. So we also have Rockwell and Garamond. All of these make really great headline fonts. And next, here are some examples of some good body fonts to use. We have Calibri. This is pretty much the standard um, default font that comes with Microsoft products now. And I just think it's a really nice, clean-looking font, and so I use it in presentations. I like Century Gothic. It looks really... Um, Century Gothic will give you a really uh, classy, uh, sort of elegant, clean look. It's got a little bit of wider letters there, you'll see. Century Schoolbook I like, and Helvetica, and Helvetica Bill Sands, really all of these are really I great you fonts that you can use for the content or body of your slides. Pretty much um, you can experiment with the fonts. The important thing is to make sure that you use uh, consistency throughout your presentation. So pick a headline font and use it throughout the whole thing, or pick up a body font and use it throughout the whole thing. And then if you want to throw one other font in there for accents or for special use, um, you can do that as well, but typically don't have more than three or three fonts or maybe four if you um, have a really long presentation. So the only number one rule that I insist on is don't use Comic Sans ever, you know, unless you're doing a presentation about <laughs> bad fonts to use. Okay, so that's it for fonts, and I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. Okay, so... The, the conclusion, the best conclusion is this one. <laughs> don't use Comic Sans. I prefer Helvetica. I don't know. But any of that is okay. Calibri or Arial. No, don't use Time New Roman, except for your papers. You know that uh, upper style is Time New Roman. But uh, for the rest, be a little bit more imaginative. Okay, so more things. This could be, this is a rule for the size. Uh, 44, uh, 32, and 24. The, the, the biggest one could be 44, next one 32, and no less than 24 to be legible. If you use a small font, you know, impossible. So don't less than 24. Don't capitalize, don't use uppercase because it's hard to read it. So don't use uppercase. And you use a complicated font, of course, it's, it's easy. Be careful with the colors. Use colors when you have to make a contrast or highlight something, but be careful with the um, well, with the letters and the legible in this case, don't do that. <laughs> it's really complicated to, to read. Be careful with yellow. Yellow is always complicated in presentations. 
So be careful with, especially this color. Be careful with the background. <laughs> what else? Um, graphs. Graphs are really important. I'm just showing everything, all the resources that you have. Graphs for us are really important. So in the case of graphs, is this a good graph? I don't know anything about that. And I have to cut the idea really fast. It's just three seconds, so I can process that. I don't know what you're talking about, so it's not a good idea. This is a good idea? It's a little bit better, <laughs> but what, what happened here? The shadows. Uh, yeah, another thing that is important with graphs. Yeah. Access or why? I don't know what is that. What is that? I, I just read blue balls and red balls, and that's it. In January, February, March, April. So I can understand this is a other <laughs> complicated option. So I recommend you Excel to make graphs because Excel is really clear to make graphs. So this is an option. Yeah. Then. This is an Excel graph, for example. It's really clear. Yes, I know what he's trying to say. But for presentation, for example, if you, you are you be careful with these kind of things, but this is an Excel graph, it's really clear. For example, SPSS uh, is not really good for some kind of graphs. Uh, I prefer to use, it depends on the kind of graph, but sometimes I use SPSS, uh, other option is MATLAB, other option is Excel, so. Google Drive has also good. Google Drive. Or oh, Graphpad. Also, yeah, different options. Uh, the most important thing with graphs is to be clear, but especially this. This is for me a good graph because I don't have to think about anything. Can you read the, the sentence? It's clear. So in the previous graph, I have to think what is the conclusion. And I had to watch the graph and look for the conclusion. Do you know what I mean? Look at the, the previous graph. It's kind of like that. So you have a title comparing employee performance to organization climate. But I have to go to the red line and see that this total climate score and is the best one. You know what I mean? But if I go to the next one, I have the conclusion. I don't have to think about the conclusion. I know that the smaller the initial cancerous tumor that is detected, the greater the survival rate of the patient. And you can see here, so you can see that the first bar here, can you see it? This is the conclusion. Can you see what I'm doing now? Can I, can you? What I'm doing now, okay, I'm, I, I don't have a pointer. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the assertion evidence structure. I prefer this option. So give the conclusion at the, uh, at the top, and then people know, ah, okay, this is the conclusion, and then I can see the graph that is the evidence. 
this is a good option. And don't forget to the titles of X and Y. It's very important. Uh, you can uh, use animations with graphs to show that this is the most important thing, okay? Uh, this is 98% and this is the, uh, the less, the, the worst if you want. I always use this video, this presentation, you can animate. It's a secret. When I finish, I, I will, I'm gonna uh, tell you the secret. When I'm trying to explain my job that is complicated to understand, I use this video and this press, uh, and it's an animation with Excel, okay? So if you can see this video, it is not very really good. The image. If you're impaired and hit someone, you'd do anything to trade places with them. But you know what? You can't. So my job is um, to check if this video has or not an impact on the audience, to know if the, the ad, the commercial is good or not. And to do that, I measured, imagine that you are my participants, and during the presentation of this video, I'm checking you, I'm measuring you, your heart rate, your skin conductance. You are sweating when you are nervous, you know? So I'm measuring that, and I'm measuring your facial movements, your muscles, so to, to know what is the impact of this video. So then I show you that, and here you can see uh, in uh, real time, the reaction of my participants watching this video. Look at the graph now. If you're impaired and hit someone, you'd do anything to trade places with them. But you know what? You can't. So if the government of Alberta um, asks me if there is an impact, I can show that, of course, there is. The uh, heart rate is decreasing uh, with what it's called and orienting response. Uh, we have an activation in the moment of the accident, and we have a very uh, e negative emotion uh, during all the presentation, and especially after the accident. So, the, in, uh, regardless, my, my research is a good way to show you what I'm doing. It's really easy to understand. And it's, well, uh, believe me, when I do that in presentations, it's like, oh my gosh, uh, it, it's really, I don't know, it's really illustrative and really easy to understand. So it's an option, you can create animated crafts. Videos, you can use uh, software to, to make videos, Windows Movie Maker, Kate's Video Tool, Kate Free, Video Dab, Lightworks, there are a lot of, I recommend you to use one to record your videos and to produce your videos, to cut videos, because sometimes you have the video of YouTube and you don't need everything. So the idea is to, or for example, the first day I, I used, I sent uh, the, um, um, the reference to Lourdes, um, the, the first day I, you watched a video uh, about attention, you know, you remember that? This video is from Brain Games uh, and I recorded it from Netflix. How can I do that? This is not in YouTube. On YouTube, I can uh, I can take the video from the web any 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 place. So the idea is that I go to Netflix, I put the video, and I record it in real time uh, with a software, this kind of software. Then I cut the part and just use the part that I I, I needed. So to do that, you need <laughs> also a software to do it. So video software. Uh, I use Premiere, but, but I'm a journalist, so I use videos and sound, and this is a professional. But if you have the creative uh, package of Adobe, uh, you have Photoshop, you have, this is Premiere for video and Audition for audio, you can use it. Sound. 
Audacity is for free and it's easy to manage. So if you have to use sound to cut sound, for example, imagine that I go to a conference and in this conference there is a, the, imagine in my topic, the, the, the best specialist all over the world and it's here. And I always go to a conference with two things, a camera and a recorder, of course, to record everything. But then when the, this uh, speaker finished the conference, I go there, I introduce myself, and I, um, I um, prepare a, a brief interview with my recorder. And I record him. And then when I have a presentation, I can use this sound the original voice of this good specialist and I don't know what, and I can put the sound in my presentation. And this is what I, I don't know, say about, I don't know what. And this is a good resource. I can put uh, the image of the a picture of this specialist and the sound saying the main idea that I have to highlight in this presentation. <coughs> other resource, other way to do it. Uh, oof, I have a complicated. Journal, yeah, I have a system to do it. Uh, it's a professional system, but uh, I know that you can do it. But the idea is that uh, try to 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 go to the um, I don't know the specialist after the conference and record uh, in this. Of course, hear his voice, not hear, not hear, no hey or not uh, are recorded in, on the table very far away or when you are sitting. Many, you can use this sound. If, if you are in the, in the audience like that, for example, imagine that you are recording, I don't know, Lourdes, that you are uh, uh, at the bottom, is recording my presentation. So it's impossible. The sound, you, it's very far away. Sound is not good. So the idea is that once I uh, listened to you, and I know what is the best idea that I have to cut, I go and say, please, well, um, let me introduce myself. I'm Emma. Uh, I'm working in the same topic as you. And for me, it's really, really important to highlight this idea. Can you please repeat it, the idea here in the recorder uh, to, to put this uh, recording to my students? Everyone says, say. Yes, oh, with the phone. Okay, I have a professional recorder, but you can do it with your phone. It's a good quality as well. So the idea is that if you use the phone or a recorder, the most important thing is the position. So localize the mic and put the microphone in this distance. Not here, because it's really uncomfortable for them. <laughs> but also because of that. Because uh, here I don't have this protector, this cover. So, a little bit, this distance. And he just say, repeated this idea. Probably he said a lot of things, not just this idea. <laughs> but you have the, this recording and you can use it in your classes and imagine that is, I don't know, for example, in psychology, it's Peter Lannan of the United States. Uh, I do, uh, every conference that I go with important specialists in my topic, I record it. Because I can use it in conferences, in talks, uh, with my students. And it's not the same that uh, Emma Rodero is saying something important that, pff, imagine, I don't know, Steve, Steve Jobs, no. Um, Mark Zuckerberg saying something. It's not the same. And for my students, it's not the same. So you can do it. You have this software also to modify voices. You can record something and modify it. You can change the pitch, you can change whatever you want. Now you have a lot of options on the website, so please, uh, I don't know, try to explore it. Objects. I use a lot of objects, as you know, <laughs> where are my resources. These are my brain resources. I use that uh, many times, and people love that because it's really easy to understand. Ideas with objects are really easy to understand. You just have to think in a metaphor or something, uh, go to the Chinese <laughs> store and try to, I don't know, to buy something similar. And people, it's really easy for comprehension. So use objects 
Here you can see well, a lot of objects. This is a video of Al Gore. I, I couldn't find the original video, but because the idea is easy to understand, let me show you. Well, in one moment of the presentation, the graph is, as you can see, it's a really, really long graph. And now the graph is really muy por encima de lo que nunca he estado por lo que respecta a este gráfico. Si tienen un poco más de paciencia conmigo, me gustaría enfatizar esto. Ya ha Look at this. This is a stair. So, it's an object. I, I don't know if you can see it. It's a stair as an elevator to show the graph. So, well, you, you can use options. Uh, chairs, uh, this, no, this is really, it's a tech talk. Okay, you know, but think about chairs, about tables, about what can I do, what can uh, objects are for showing things. So, images, of course, images are really important. I told you, visual are really important. Visual information for you is really important. Here, a piece of information, and three days later, you'll remember that. But if you use an image, I think that this, this idea for today is really clear. <laughs> Pictures with text, always. So, first idea, don't use pixeled pictures. This is really easy to understand. And when you look for pictures uh, on Google, please select these options, uh, select uh, you can see here this, and you can see here grande. This is the size. So you have to use this option to, to select a picture. Don't use mediano or pequeño, because uh, probably your picture will be mm, pixel when you are trying to, well, you know what I mean? So this is the option, grande. And if you put your mouse just over the, the picture, you can see the size, so a big size. If not, this picture, you can use this picture. So this is the option. No, I'm, I'm just browsing pictures. Uh, no, no, just big side for presentation. OK. Uh, what else? Pictures. You have different options. I think that one thing that people, uh, or in which one people don't think is, take your own pictures. Sometimes you are trying to find a picture, and you, uh, you can do it, and it's easy. <laughs> take your own camera and go to I don't know what, and do the picture that you need, exactly the picture that you need, and you, you, you can use it. Also, you can buy stock photos. This is another option. If your presentation is really important, doesn't mind to buy a photo. You, you can uh, use a lot of options, but let me show you, for example, three. Well, this is movie. Leave this page. Um, for example, do you know Flickr? But in Flickr, I need to use the commons. The commons, not any picture, just the commons. So you have to go to Flickr and select uh, the commons. Uh, or you can use Photolia. It's another option to take uh, images. Uh, of course, you have to pay, but pack mensual 0,64. If, if you need a lot of pictures, this is an option. Other option is the Shutterstock. Shutterstock, this, this one. 70 million of photos, vectors, videos, pistas. So this is an option. Google, big site, uh, big size. Um, I don't know, and this kind of webs. Or you can take your own picture. But be careful with pictures because they <laughs> are important in your presentation. OK, so pictures, now, technology. 
you know, if technology uh, can fail, probably will fail. <laughs> It's, it, it's always the same. So be careful with these kind of things because, you, you know, you have to go previously, you have to check everything, especially you have videos, if you have sounds and, well. If you use a Mac, don't forget your uh, adapter. It's kind that is really common. And it, with, without this adapter, you can, you know, <laughs> you can do your presentation. Uh, for example, in the States, all the universities uh, have this uh, adapter and you can go and show your ID and it's easy to, to get one of that. Here in Spain, it's not common. So if you, don't, if you forget your adapter, you're lost, basically. So that's why I buy one of them just for my bag. This bag always has an adapter. And I never touch it just for the presentation. I forgot a lot of times the adapter, and I had a lot of problems. So the idea is just, well, one, one here, <laughs> that's it. The problem, out. Pen drive. You need also a pen drive, whatever, uh, and put your presentation in the format that you created, but also in PowerPoint. So in this pen drive, I have two presentations. One, in, in my case, in Keynote, and the other in PowerPoint. And why? Because if I have a problem, and believe me, I, in the past I had a lot of problems with technology, because I'm a person that I use a lot of technology, in the sense that I use sound and videos and many things. Uh, the only software that uh, you are completely sure that it's everywhere, is PowerPoint. Yeah, but sometimes it doesn't work. It's yeah. like just having a PDF. Yeah. Yeah, there are a PDF you can even open in the browser. Yeah, actually, with that, it's very funny with the students because I say to my students, bring me PDF and whatever you're doing. And many times, I will look at the students and I say, I'm going to do a point lesson. Then the students will go, I cannot see absolutely anything. Yeah, the problem is if you have a PDF, you can reproduce videos. Yeah, yeah, but it's, a, it's, a, it's another option. So, uh, well, PDF as well. But in all the computers, you have yeah, but PowerPoint. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. But it's other alternative. So I have PowerPoint, I have Keynote, okay? And also, I, always in the pen drive, not in the cloud, on the cloud or in... In el abismo, que digo yo. Uh, not. Uh, three months ago, I think, uh, an American teacher of the state came to visit us to the Department of Communication, and she had the presentation in Prezi, really good presentation in Prezi, uh, where, <laughs> we don't know, uh, she forgot the password. <laughs> Where's your presentation? <laughs> I forgot the password, so oh no, you don't, you don't have the presentation. No, oh. yeah, but this will, it's like that's why I pay for Prexy. I don't, I don't trust in in something that is online because it can happen two things. One is I forgot my password, uh, and but the other is you don't have internet connection. It's really common, so no, my presentation is with me here in the pen drive, it's here inside. And I take it, uh, the presentation, uh, well, this is the, the speaker, I take it the presentation before in the pen drive. Because if you are using videos, or especially if you are using sound, and you move the folder, and you copy the presentation to the pen drive, won't work. So, no, it's just copy and then check in the pen drive, in the pen drive, that it's working at home. So, my recommendation is that use the same folder with everything. I have a folder, the first thing that I do when I'm preparing a presentation is a folder. And in this folder I put videos, sound, and presentation. 
I can show you if you want for this presentation. Uh, in, inside videos, there are videos. Inside sounds, uh, there are all the sounds. And what I save to the pen drive is the whole folder, not just the PPT <laughs> presentation. It's the whole folder. Because if not, after that, PowerPoint or the software or whatever, uh, it's enabled to uh, localize the, the, the resource, the, the source. Uh, the video, the sound, or whatever. So check again the presentation in the pen drive. And I also use a speaker. This is my speaker. It's come, it comes with me everywhere. A lot of times I went to a presentation. Ah, oh, sound is not working. I have oh, all my presentations are sound. So okay, don't worry. Sound is not working. I have my own sound put that in the, in the computer, and it sounds really well. And it's really small. You have a lot of that, like, like that, for example. This is a speaker as well, like that. This is this size. So, and it's not just for sound, because if you have a video, it's the same. So uh, I went to a presentation 15 days ago to a colleague. Uh, he's working with DAB, you know, with, with Dabin. You know what is Davin in Spain, El Doblaje. Um, Davin is something that you can hear and, and watch. And uh, he had a lot of videos uh, showing films and the dubbing and nothing. His presentation was for nothing because sound wasn't working. So it's like that. It's, I think fifteen dollars. I bought bought these in in the states, and it's fifteen dollars. Be careful with the microphone. I told you. Well, uh, this is the distance, but be careful if you don't have a cover like that, for example, for that. So if you don't have a cover, the idea is to a little bit far away. So more or less in this distance. Yeah, it's because I have this. Now, this distance, more or less. Because if not, I mean, any, any las exclusivas. Um, so this distance, more or less. And the important thing is, uh, in this position here, more or less is this distance. Okay? If you have the cover like that, you can be closer. And don't do that. Oh, he's working. <laughs> this is for nothing. The idea is that you have to check with your voice and, the, and with the same intensity and the same way that you will use. Check the microphone and you go and say, one, two, three, four, five. And then when I try to I, I start my presentation, I say, good morning. <laughs> If someone checked the microphone with this intensity, then, and, and you uh, don't use this uh, intensity after that, so it's for nothing. So try to just say in the same way that your presentation, one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, okay, it's working perfect. Probably in, in the presentation that, uh, in the competition, we search for uh, in four minutes, the microphone will be uh, like that, so you can use la something like that. It's really comfortable because you don't have to, what? The idea with the microphone is to use your hands. So if you are, for example, um, in class, use or, or ask for some kind of microphones. Not this microphone, because if not, I can move my hands. And the, the idea with gestures is to move my hands. So kind of like that. Scenery, OK, this is the last part. Position that you have to use when you are you doing, uh, giving a presentation is always standing up. Always stand up. Why? First, well, you're an expert now in voice. <laughs> but why for voice? Because of the capacity, you don't have the same air capacity as a student. Exactly, for breathing. 
diaphragmatic breathing needs to be in this position. Second reason. You look more formal, uh, and it's easier to do, to make gestures when I am in this position, and I can move. But the, I'm sit here, the third reason is that I can interact with you. It's like static, it's not a, a good way to, to present. This is why I never use Note in the software. You know that PowerPoint or Keynote, you can write the text uh, and put your note? I never use it. It's the worst thing because they are really, really, really small. And now I'm, I'm here, <laughs> but my note is <laughs> supposed to be there in my computer. So I can read it. So it's absurd. Um, and also, it's just if, if I'm sitting, but if I'm sitting, it's, it's an, a normal uh, position. Even when you are in, on a table with all the people sitting uh, and all the presenters, the previous presenters made, gave, gave the presentation, sit, stand up. It's the way to outstanding. It's the way to show that I'm for you. I'm giving an effort to explain myself and for you to understand me. So. Mm, stand up, and in this moment, <laughs> I I lost, I missed the, the note, so that's why it's absurd to put the note there. So this is all the reasons. What else? This avoid that, or put in the middle of the slide. But this is not a good position. <laughs> Imagine this guy uh, in the presentation doing that. It's like, no, I can show the, the, the head. and So I always have a reference in front of me, and this is my reference. I don't have to do that, except if I, in, in certain moments, um, but what I do is 45 degrees. I put here, and I show you, and we can, sh we can see something. But this is very unnatural. <laughs> it's like... It's very, very weird. In the in research for four minutes in the competitions, you will be here. So I don't do that. Please, that is, it's really. And this is another option. Don't walk uh, for here is because it's really big, but probably you have the presentation here, so avoid to walk through the slide. This kind of thing. What else? So 45 degrees to show something, but just in in one side one side of the slide, not in the middle. And what else? Attitude. This is really important. Attitude. What happened with attitude? Attitude should be... You can move but not going through. If I have... Here I can do it because the, the, the slide is really high. And if I do that, well, I don't interfere your vision. But if the presentation is here, I can do that because I interfere in your, your visual. So I'm just here. I can move here in this part. I can show you something if you want, but I don't go there, go through the, the slide. Enthusiastic. Uh, you have to be positive. You have to be enthusiastic. Uh, what is the, um, your opinion about this guy? Interesting. <laughs> but do you think that he's a good guy? It's, it's nice or not? Ah, it's enthusiastic. No? Why? Conspiring. But the face is nice, I think. Yes. It's a smiling. So smile, because it's free. So you can do it. And because it's contagious, just try to do it. Go with a friend and try to smile from the beginning and count time. And you will see that it's 
I don't know, one minute or less, and the other person uh, will start smiling. It's contagious, so do it because you, you convey this positive uh, emotion. What happened with this woman? It's okay, not, it's nice, or uh, it's rude, or too enthusiastic? <laughs> Scared. <laughs> Well, he's trying to, she's trying to say something, or not. So it's a positive attitude in this sense, because she's doing an effort for me. I always try to, to say to my students, oh, this is a, a really general recommendation, but uh, it's not the same if I'm uh, in this way, like that, uh, trying to do in my presentation. Uh, because now I'm, I'm not making any effort for you, right? So there is no transmission here. Something happened. <laughs> so, but if I'm trying to do... Ah, this is another option. So this is completely different, you know what I mean? So when you are trying to explain something, you are making an effort, always. If you finish your presentation, if you finish your class and you are completely fresh, it's like, mm, I think that you didn't your work really well. You know what I mean? So when you finish your presentation, the idea is that you have to, to be really tired, really tired. This is a good presentation because you do mm, a lot of effort. So I, I go to this guy. No, this guy. What happened with this guy? It's okay? It's a positive? No? There are a lot of speakers with this in Spanish, careto. Uh, this is a bad expression in Spanish to say bad face. Uh, no, this is not the attitude. So we are working the attitude just in a few minutes. Is what? There is time for everything. Maybe in the precise moment you need to be serious. So. Of course, but not, but not this. I don't need to, to, to do this, to make this gesture. Any time. So, no. Uh, no. I'm just trying to explain to you something, so be positive and I don't know. So it's a question of attitude. attitude so people can um, perceive your attitude. It's easy. So if you are not, if you don't, are not conveying a good feeling, people can perceive it. So be careful with that. So let's take a break till 15 minutes and try to warm up your voice during the, <laughs> the break to practice a little bit uh, your presentations. Okay, so let's go. Um, I was talking about the doctoral dissertation and the presentation of this day. Uh, you are really nervous about that. I was <laughs> saying something, something in silence.
Um, I'm here again. I need a timer to control your time. Ah, and, and you can use all the resources in your doctoral dissertation defense. Don't worry about that. It's a serious moment, but it's the same. I, I use this resource. <laughs> I use this resource a lot of times with psychologists, <laughs> with everyone. Uh, and it, if it's pertinent, if it's okay to represent your idea, it doesn't matter. So don't be afraid to use it. What? Ah, okay. It's. Ah, they are. Oh. No, at the, at the end, not now. <laughs> uh, pause. Oh my gosh, what's that? Assume, no. What is the start countdown? No, this is really complicated. Okay, it's the same. Just uh, let me give you the last recommendations. Well, you know, there is a lot of uh, information, I know. There is just three master sessions. Uh, it's a lot of information. But um, just email me if you need something after these classes. Even if you have to practice your presentation, I can do it. I can go to your office or whatever <laughs> and try to help you to, I don't know, with gestures, with voice, with uh, resources, because now here we, we don't have time to go in deep and every resource and everything. It's just, um, I'm just showing everything. And then you have to adjust these resources to your presentation. And well, it depends on the, I can find my presentation. This is not my presentation. So you can see this is my folder for these classes. I have. It's in Spanish, I'm sorry. Uh, my notes, I have the documents for you. For example, this is the class two um, that I gave uh, just finishing class, so I don't know why you don't have um, this material, but I sent it, I sent everything. Uh, what else? Because I have the outline form, uh, I have the presentations here, and I have the videos and resources here. You know, a lot of. Uh, for example, this is the sound. Hi, today Emma. This is me. Uh, whatever. Okay, a lot of things. So let me go here. Question of attitude. Movement. Try to move, but not to dance. We say the baile de sambito, el baile, no, uh, so don't. Visual contact with people, this is really important. I can detect if someone is shy, just to, because uh, shy people, it's unable to maintain contact, uh, visual contact, so you have to do it, contact. What else? Don't touch your hair, don't put your hair covering your eyes. Please, don't do that during the presentation or that, or ah, these kind of things, because there are noises. There are no gestures to support your presentation. What else? Don't touch your, noise, your, your nose, sorry, because uh, you are not lying to me. What else? I have this microphone. Nose and... Don't put your hands in the pockets. And what else? Let me show you. No. Don't be shy. Probably she's cute, but she's not competent. And you are giving a scientific, a scientific presentation, so this is not the attitude. And don't shoot the slides. 
This is what she's doing in this moment. So many people are uh, presenting with the pointer. I recommend you to have your own pointer, please. If you are a presenter, if you are a teacher, you need this one. So with you, everywhere. Uh, it, with this pointer, I can just, well, I can pass this light, I can point, of course, uh, and it's a timer also. So it vibrates when I have, for example, one minute left. So I just can uh, program previously while well, my presentation is 20 minutes. And when I'm in the 19 minute, it's vibrating, saying, <laughs> you have to finish, you have to finish. So it's, it's, it's not very cheap and it's really useful for you, so use it, but don't shoot the slide. Because pointer works just doing that. You don't have to do that. Unless to the slide. Many people do that to the slide. But where is the Bluetooth? It's in the computer. So. Yeah, but you can. Well, and it's the same. You, you, can, you, you, you don't have to shoot your computer. Yeah, you have, you have to do it, you can do it. But uh, not shoot like that. Uh, on every time that I have to change the slide, I do that. No, it's, it's not necessary. What else? Clothes. <laughs> no, if you are recording a video, but this is a joke, but can you understand the joke? Really? Everyone? Okay. The idea is, Try to put something that is not outstanding. <laughs> because here, my attention is, well, you know, it's easy. So, no. You have to, to <laughs> wear clothes, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> that are uh, not outstanding. Something formal between formal and informal. I know that is complicated to, to explain, but between something formal and informal, for example, you are good to do a presentation, it's okay. Um, you don't need a suit also, and don't go to be very formal. Be careful women with necklace and all of these things, uh, uh, for example, here, or the, the neck here, or, uh, this kind of thing, so nothing really and nothing really you know what I mean? Because the important thing is the content, not the... This is the guy that you saw uh, first uh, day. I'm sorry, uh, but my opinion is that it's not really good to, do, to give a presentation with this. Short uh, trousers and... It's a scientific presentation, so please, a little bit... For example, you are very fine. Everyone here is... Normal, it's just something normal, okay? <laughs> Other thing that is, is really, really, really important is to go to the bathroom before your presentation. Go to the bathroom, please, and check everything. Check strange things in your face, <laughs> or, I don't know, these kind of things. It happens, so go to the bathroom, check, everything's okay, don't have anything in my teeth. Um, mm, this kind of things, please. And time, you know that in this competition, in research in four times, you have uh, a timer here. It's just four minutes, no one, four, no four minutes and a, no one second. But everything in life is a timer in your presentation. For example, that in the defense of your doctoral dissertation is 20 minutes. Uh, when you go to a conference, it's 15, 20 minutes. My recommendation, uh, if someone uh, tell me that my presentation has to, that the length of my presentation is 20 minutes, I prepare a presentation for 15 minutes. Um, for example, now uh, I have a conference in Paris and they told me, well, between 20 and 25, I prepare 18. I'm gonna prepare 18. Less is more, it's better than people need to, um, to listen to um, something more than if it's boring. 
So this is the, the worst thing. And because many people probably, uh, and it's really common, it's your time, and you are in a conference, you are uh, after I don't know who, because people is, I'm sorry, are unable to control time, and, and I can stand that, uh, it's like, okay, um, my presentation is short. In these five minutes, it's uh, the way to adjust my presentation. And I always prepare hidden uh, slides. If, if I have more time, perfect. If I don't have time, it's hidden. So be careful with it. What else? Well, practice makes perfect. And because makes perfect, is time to practice. So I need volunteers to... Elena is, is the first volunteer. Because we have uh, here a presentation. Come here, Elena. No. <laughs> Again. Because what happened with this way to go? It was like... But what is the emotion that is conveying? Too much nervous, no. So, take your, shh, slow. Shoulders back. No, because this is like, no. <laughs> you have to convey credibility, confidence. So just go, paso firme. No, 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 your head. If I do that, what happened? She lost uh, her confidence when... She just played. Shin, always parallel uh, to ground. Always. And shoulders back. And paso firme. No, don't, don't, don't hold your hand because your hand is it's okay there. No, you don't have to do that. Okay. So, and the smile. She has a difficulty there. <laughs> Go to the mic. Oh, sorry. Mm, yeah, it's because I have them. I can do it for you if you want. We are supposed that uh, she has the pointer and whatever. Look. One. Uh, Lourdes. Do you know Lourdes? Yeah. Is there? So look at Lourdes. Okay. Smile. And start. I know what you might be thinking. She's going to talk about paintings of nothing. Slow. But I have to do it in a minute and a half. It's slow. Wait. Did, did you understand anything? Not a word. Not a word. Imagine. <laughs> well, Thank you. I, I know that <laughs> poor, poor Elena is the first one, and but I'm going to, to try to, well, to okay. do it well. No. Can I do it in more than one minute and a half then? The, the no. The my practice, it was like, okay. So I know what you might be thinking. She's going to talk about paintings of nothing. You are not uh, talking to me now. Okay. She's going to talk about paintings of nothing, and that's partially uh, true. And why you are hungry now? You are angry. <laughs> okay. Did you perceive a little bit? Continue. And that's partially true. This is why I've Repeat called... again the problem. Hmm? Repeat again the problem. Okay. Slow and smile. I know that you might be thinking she's going to talk about paintings of nothing. Better? And that's partially true. This is why I've called my... Jester, Jester, and what? And this is partially true. This is why I've called my presentation what to look at when there's nothing to see. Some contemporary paintings, like that by Mar Rothko, 21st, 20th century. Slow, 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 I'm losing you. 20th English century. people uh, talk uh, slower than you. Spanish, we are really fast. Don't forget that. And you are using uh, a foreign language. So, slow, slow, slow. Some contemporary paintings, like that by Mar Rothko, 20th century like what? artist. Like what? Like the previous one, like that, <laughs> uh, produce a great incomprehension. 
we go to the museums and we understand nothing. And then you hear some angry people saying, I can also do that. Okay, pause. Look at them. <laughs> <laughs> and now, what? what there else? is a problem of comprehension. We define art by a talent to represent reality, and contemporary art is just not interested in that anymore. This is why, this is why I think we need a solution. We need what? A solution. No, <laughs> no it's not this gesture. No. A solution. <laughs> a solution. <laughs> Leave it be natural, natural. not. <laughs> okay. This is why I need, we need a solution. Better or not? Perfect. Go ahead. We need to rethink and just one. Okay. We need to rethink and redefine what is the aesthetic experience that we should have in front of these abstract paintings. Artists are suggesting a new game, so we need new rules. Perfect. The solution I propose is to follow this equation. The aesthetic experience, when it is about the sublime, is necessarily a mystic experience. Look at them. A Please. mystic experience. It is an act rather than a passive experience by, we, by, by which we have to avoid any previous knowledge, exile, rationality, and accept to be lost for a moment. Just to let the mystery reveals, not rationally, but by a spiritual comprehension. Let the painting affect us. Articulating for the first time many futures that have been considered in Rothko's art. I need to pass. One more? Yeah. Um, articulating for the first time many futures that have been considered in Rothko's art, mm, seeing how they function together for the expression of an abstract and spiritual sublime, we are, all, we are going to be able not only to justify the equation, Rothko's aesthetic act as a Another mystical? one? Yes. Another one? Yeah. I don't know why. Okay. Rothko's aesthetic um, experience as a mystic mystical. experience, but also to learn how to react and what to expect. In other words, only like that we are going to enlarge Rothko's interpretation. Attention. And learn how... How was your attention now? So be careful. In other words, only like that we are going to enlarge Rothko's interpretation and learn how to see the invisible. That what we would normally think of as having no image. Sorry. Learn to see this and some other contemporary paintings. Thank you very much. No, uh, finish mm -hmm. again. Okay. With a smile. Learn to see this and other and some other contemporary paintings. But look at them again. Okay. Smile. Your hands. What is the conclusion? Mm, learn to see and this these and other contemporary paintings. And smile and look at them. Perfect. Well, okay. It's okay, you know. <laughs> Sorry for the pointer, <laughs> it was not working. <laughs> Okay, good. Another, another one. And for me now, it is, it's the same, the, the resources or the time. Okay, try it, Anna. But I have a presentation for five minutes. I, I, oh. reduce, oh. it, I just reduced it in two hours. Five minutes. Yeah. Ay, five minutes. It's too much. What happened with that? These are uh, the notes she used. It's impossible to me for, it's impossible to read this in a presentation. Why? When I have that, these notes, I use always, uh, well, this is what I recommend. I have the, um, my, my subject here is, uh, my course here is oratoria uh, and I, use kind of like that. I recommend to my students, if you need notes, just use cards. And here, the size of the font is 16 at least. And also double space. 
because if not, it's impossible to read that, to try to just uh, see that when I'm trying to maintain visual uh, communication and then trying to read that. So use a car with this kind of letter here, very, very big, and well, and it's natural. People know that you are doing a presentation and you are managing this note. It's okay, you can do it, but not that. It's like... So double space and the size. Go ahead, Anna. Ah, you have also resources to... Uh, no. We can put it here. Mm -hmm. I'm your pointer because it's not working. Here we go. Let me go. Okay. Yeah. Just give me a, a sign to do it. Ah. <laughs> Now, again, go. One thing that, um, well, you, you have to be able to manage the microphone. Don't think that people, uh, that you have a technique uh, for you, a technician that go there and put your microphone. So please, if the mic is here, just take the mic and put. So you have to place uh, by your own, not, way to someone, so. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, then, then oh. Uh, because we have to show up this place. Let me see if I can go there. Swap. Okay. Good morning. One of the symbols. Ah, good morning. No. It's Hello. really bored. Hello, everybody. No. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. This, this high pitch, please. Good morning. Better. When you start the presentation, you need a high pitch. Uh, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Thank you for coming. One of the symbols. Uh, Let me just say something. Uh, and remember that in English, English uses a high pitch more than you, you know? Oh my gosh! But it, it's higher than you. So if you say, good morning, English people, native people, is like, oh my gosh. Because they use a uh, median, uh, 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 you know, a higher pitch uh, than you. So, good morning. It's good morning, it's not good morning. Or the, with this low tone, I have this low tone and say, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Perfect. you for coming. You know that one of the symbols that best represent justice is the scale. Yeah. A one, two, three, four, five. One. <laughs> one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Drink. Okay. It's water. Be water, my friend. And I start again. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming. One of the symbols that best represent justice. Better? One of the symbols that best represent justice is the scales. You know, partiality, equal opportunities, and scales. Scales, yeah. And there's a balance. Even though my object of a study has. Even a, though more, higher pitch. Even though. Now. Even though my object of a study has a close relation with justice, there's very few balance in the field of legal Catalan. I'll explain you. Nobody and no, I smile and say it again. I explain you. I, I explain will, it to you. I explain to you. Nobody or very few people use Catalan legal language, even though the government invests a lot of resources 
It promotes a lot of training courses. It publishes more intensity. More int it promotes a lot of training courses. It publishes more. a lot of legal language dictionaries, and it tries and it, 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 the other it hand. even tries to modernize Use the legal the other language. Hand. Okay, I can okay. see. <laughs> again, <laughs> um, again, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nobody use use legal language, or very few people use legal high Catalan beach. language. Um, high beach. Even though the government. The, yes. What Sorry. the government? What? Even though the government invests a lot of resources. No, 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 no. Don't frown. Not that. Okay. Even though the government invests a lot of resources. Open your mouth. One. One. It promotes Look at a me. lot of training it, courses. Listen to me. One. One. And what? What else? It promotes a lot of it training. It promotes. Open your mouth. Promote. Promote a lot of training courses. Open. It, pla it publish a Open. lot of legal language dictionaries and the other hand. try to modernize the legal language. Like this. I'll show you. I'll show you some statistics. Um, light look, blue. Don't look back. Okay. Do you have the light blue. There? Show the number of, of of rulings written by judges in Catalan. Second, the blue shows the number of document Can proceedings. Can you get the first? <laughs> yeah. The information, I mean. Okay. Right. The blue shows the number of document proceedings written in Catalan. 45 degrees when you are showing something. And the blue, and what about notaries? Notaries use Catalan in only 10% of their documentation. These are the levels of, use, of the Catalan use in the legal field. So the situation is very, very bad. Repeat Even it again. The situation is very, very bad. Even me last summer, I went to a, a law firm and I want to file an, uh, an action against a bank. And I, 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 I asked to do it in Catalan, and they told me that they feel insecure. They Look don't at want to work in Catalan. Look at Lourdes. Yes. So for this reason, well, so the situation is very, very bad. For this reason, what I do is to analyze the past and present of the legal Catalan language. Don't move for your mic. The, the situation is very, very complex. And the situation is what? Very, very complex. No. Is <laughs> <laughs> complex is the most important thing. So pause before. The situation is very, very complex. Now. Okay. Don't worry about if you, today is just to say. Okay. Don't worry if you miss the text or. The situation is very, very complex. However, you can study this object of a study uh, from different points of view. I choose four. I'll do a conceptual analysis, a documentary analysis, a linguistic analysis, and a sociolinguistic analysis. Okay, this and is the best position, you know. Uh, don't look at the slide, because you are looking at the slide mm -hmm. and looking at her face. Perfect. And the combination and, Open the, um, and the combination of Open the results your mouth. Open your mouth. and the combination of the results of these four analyses uh, will um, Sorry, will show the weak and the strong points use, of that use, legal Catalan uh, situation. Use expressions to try to avoid these these blank spaces. Mm -hmm. For example, if you don't remember the word, you don't remember. You can say, well, you know, this is the most important thing that I. This is the best. You, you have to keep in mind this concept, and I am trying to. Or, or look at this. Look at this graph. And, and try to look for the the word. So. The combination of the results of these four analyses will show the weak points and the strong points of the legal Catalan the situation. What? The strong points and the, and the weak points. No? The strong True. and the weak. Weak is weak. Weak, okay. The strong and the weak points of the legal Catalan no. language. Uh, for example, uh, in the documentary analysis, I will be able to identify duplicities in documents, or who knows if I identify any gap. Any what? Any gap in the linguistic analysis, I will identify some. I will know if the linguistic model stipulated by government is still going on, or maybe it has changed, or, there, or maybe nowadays there are linguistic criteria contradictions. Perfect. And Conclusion. Open your mouth. Okay. Smile again. 
This was not the conclusion. The conclusion. Okay. Yeah. One minute. In short, I will be able to write down um, proposals to improve the legal language Catalan. Sorry, no, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry. In short, I will be able to write down proposals to improve the legal Catalan language. A smile. Now. <laughs> okay, applause. What else? Uh, remember the, the first class, because you are not writing uh, very, very oral communication. Remember that you don't have to give new information in every sentence, because it's complicated to understand. Remember that, so use these rules that uh, we explained first day. But okay, you did it well. You have to open your mouth, you... So I have techniques to do that. Another volunteer? Did you have a press? Uh, yeah, yeah, let me start this. Come on. <laughs> Perfect. I think that. Okay, here we go. Okay. What is the best way to give a presentation? This? <coughs> hit me. Hmm? Hit me. Hit you? No. Yeah, hit me. Okay. Hit me now. <laughs> With your shoulders. This is the way to move. I can move, uh, I can move my body, but I'm not in a, it, this is a relaxing position, okay? So this is the position. This is something nervous, I'm really tense in this case, so. Okay, perfect, now, mm -hmm. start. Colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer-related death in developed countries. I have a problem, colorectal cancer. Did you get it? The most important words are at the beginning. Colorectal cancer. At the beginning. I lost the, the, the two main words, or not. The, mo the most important words cannot uh, uh, be at the beginning. Okay. Uh, do you know the rule? The most important thing is at the, at the end of the sentence. So today, I'm going to talk about something that is really important in our society is pus, colorectal cancer. Did you get it now? Now I start, but don't start directly with wow. So today I'm going to talk about a very important problem for our society, colorectal cancer. And now you can start. Colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer-related death in developed countries. Current therapies, namely surgery and combination chemotherapy, yeah, it's gonna fall. Okay. Current therapies, namely surgery and combination chemotherapy, something we all have heard of, are quite efficient if the tumor is detected in early stages. So one sentence, 50 words, it's not clear. <laughs> and sorry. the idea of subordinated classes are not, no, no. I just wrote, you know? Yeah, it is reading uh, presentation. Okay. For the more progressed disease, however, surgery and chemotherapy remain largely ineffective. Can you uh, feel that this reading is not something to, to spread uh, oral? It's kind of like reading. It's, okay. your, it's my paper. And it's okay yeah. for my paper, but not for a presentation. Okay. It's very complicated to use different kind of voices, intensity, speech, and to to play with my voice if it's not oral um, language. Okay. <clears throat> from from the beginning, not from here. From from for okay. the more progressed. For the more progressed disease. So you are starting the sentence high pitch. For the from for the more progressed disease, however, surgery and chemotherapy remain largely ineffective. 
From here arises the need to develop more arises. arises the need to develop more specific therapies. But to develop more specific therapies, we need to know correctly. What, what ask? What? What? I have questions later, but okay. Okay. So now. But to develop more specific therapies, we need to know colorectal tumors better. We what? We need to know colorectal tumors better. Pass, pause here. Okay. We, we know. Need, we need what? We need to know colorectal tumors better. We know that some colorectal tumors are addicted to notch signaling. And what is this signaling thing you might be wondering? Well, a signaling pathway is the mechanism by, by which a cell can interact or sense, interact, interact or sense, or communicate with, with its environment. Now I have good news now. No, uh, now. Now. I have good now. <laughs> I have good news and bad news. <laughs> what do you want to hear first? All right, I give you the bad news stop. first. If you, if you, yeah. What do you want to hear first? If you ask a question, stop and wait for the answer. It's horrible when you are saying it, asking a question, and I don't have time to answer by myself. But this audience is very shy. They're not going to answer. Yeah, but I need time to okay. answer by myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. In silence for you, but you need to answer the question. If not, don't ask me. <laughs> if I don't have time to answer. Okay, so I have good news answer. and bad news. Perfect. What do you want to hear first? Stop, look at them, wait, and now. All right, I'll give you the bad news first. Our healthy intestine is also addicted to notch signaling. Well, this means that general notch inhibition is toxic for our, not, for our normal intestinal function. But, as I anticipated, there's a piece of good news. Let me explain to you first. Oh, stop. Yeah, Look stop. Good news. Smile. Good news. Good news. <laughs> what a, like, Let me explain to you first that to trigger this notch pathway, the cells need to sense notch ligands which can come in two flavors, delta or jagged, or as I like to call them in the context of the intestine, the good cop and the bad cop. So delta, the good cop and the bad cop. <laughs> I'm not I used to having my two hands two though. Hands. Okay. So delta, the good cop, is necessary for the normal intestine, whereas jagged, the bad cop, is what tumor cells are addicted to. So we're basically trying to find out whether we can kill tumor cells by blocking jagged activity, you know, the bad cop. Including, so now yeah. is look at them, okay. smile. smile. So we're basically trying to find out whether we can kill tumor cells by blocking jagged one activity, you know, the bad cop, while the normal intestine could still rely on delta or the good cop. Yeah, this I didn't know. Okay, so good afternoon and welcome to my presentation. Stop. No. Okay, good afternoon and welcome to my presentation on the effects of long term care on benefits. No, okay. okay. But okay. doing that, and it's inside, and you are not inside. No. No. <laughs> So welcome to my presentation on the effects of long-term care benefits on dependent mortality. This research aims to assess the effective Less intensity. This research Less soft. This research Less soft. This research Good afternoon. This research. So this research, this, this research aims to assess the effectiveness yeah, because this research aims to assess the effective. Aims, what is the aims? 
aims to assess the effectiveness of long-term care, the effectiveness of long-term care benefits. So, before dipping into my present, stop, stop. Before dipping into my presentation, what is the, you are trying to, you are perceiving the person, because the person is going, you trying to, you try to make the breath for me, and the second one is the other. I don't know if you hear or not. Try to do it in your style. Before dipping into the research, I would like first to thank you for being here. And please do not hesitate to interrupt me if for clarifications or comments. Especially comments are appreciated as this is a working in progress. differentiate the most important thing of what are you trying to explain to me? You know what I mean? So, relax. Again, relax. Deep breath. Before dipping into the research, I would like first to I thank you. What? I would like first to thank very much for attending. And it's please, nice. and please, do not hesitate to interrupt me for clarifications or comments. Comments. It's better in this way? I can understand something now, so. Comments are especially appreciated as this is a work in progress. I have uh, a, a metronome at home to reduce the, the pace of people are very fast, so perfect. For those who are not familiar with long-term care, long-term care is defined as a permanent, as is the rhythm. For those who are not familiar with long-term care, let me define it. This is the rhythm. Long-term care is the permanent assistant to carry out basic and instrumental activities of daily living. So, yeah. this is the way to do it, uh, because if not, I, I can understand you, and you have these problems with your voice for doing these kind of things. Especially, talk very fast is really bad for your voice. In a high intensity, it's another factor that is important. So, okay, conclusion. Okay, this type of situation. Again. <laughs> this can't go back to, to okay. shock, rhythm. These type of situations are very common at all ages. Low tone. When we lost Smile. our intellectual and physical uh, Soft. autonomy to autonomy develop. To develop to develop an independent life. So I guess... Uh, this is the worst thing, the track, the voice. Uh, <laughs> this is really bad for your vocal cord. You have to have enough uh, air to finish the sentence uh, with voice. This is voice, this is no problem. So don't use it. This is another problem for your yeah. voice. So I guess that we all agree that a uh, given population aging, the relevance of long-term care policies are undeniable. Better? Now? Improve? Nice recovery. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we will uh, program those masters. 
question and we don't, we don't know what, what, what will happen. So the idea is that if you consider that this uh, training is important for you, for the doctoral student if you think university right down there uh, in evaluating the paper classes, evaluating to the um, director, the director, and the idea is to program to, to prepare more specifically for the next year, but Just one minute for Lourdes while you are trying to... Good afternoon. Thank you for coming to my presentation. In the United States, there is a serious okay. problem. Ball, you know, this is very low. Uh, you are not smiling. Okay. So smile again, high pitch, and start again. Good Thank afternoon. You. Yeah, now. Thank you for coming to my... To yeah. Mic. Uh, let me yeah. put it here. Yeah. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming to my presentation. In the United States, there is a, but it's a serious. <laughs> okay, in the United States, there is a serious problem of innocent people. There is what? A serious problem of innocent people being sentenced to jail. According to study by the Innocence Project Organization, Right now, at least 46,000 people, innocent people, are incarcerated. This is a more important... And the most common cause, eyewitness misidentification. So try to go faster. Faster. 76% of the first 250 exonerated by DNA tests were wrongly identified. Eyewitness ecologists nice. who study why those mistakes are taking place have published guidelines okay, to improve the identification what? to improve the identification process. Yeah, your face is important. Your eyes. Among them, how a photo lineup is being presented. However, do, however, they do not say anything about the type anything about the type of the picture itself, usually being a mugshot. The objective of my presentation is to demonstrate from a visual studies framework that mugshots connote something else than just the mere physical description of a face. Mugshots are biased. Because of historical reasons, they carry a stigma of guilt. Okay. And when the wit sorry. Uh, yeah. And when the witness is in front of a photo lineup, and smile, mugshot's yeah. stigma don't jelly. Don't jelly. Don't increases the likelihood okay, so. of the witness choosing one of the pictures, even though none is the actual criminal. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Time to. I I I know it so. I knew it, but uh, please email me if you need uh, something else, if you need more resources or whatever. We uh, have a picture now, and this is my secret. <laughs> it's called Mio, uh, and it detects uh, the muscular movement. So I just have uh, four gestures to, to move my presentation, and even my computer. It's not just for presentation. I can. Uh, do many things with my computer just using that. So uh, I just use it in, in important presentations, uh, but today uh, I, I want to show you, so I, I have it. Just one minute, because someone had to come here to, for the picture. Oh yeah, picture. Can, could you come here to the stage and give a picture and get a picture here? 